The new Generative Expand feature in Adobe Photoshop is a great tool for InDesign users, and in this video, I'll show you why. In this tutorial, learn how to expand the dimensions and content of an image using Generative Expand. We'll also go over how to place the image in an InDesign layout specifically for an Instagram Stories project. So let's jump right into this video and start creating. I'm in InDesign right now and I'm working on a social media post that I'd like to share as an Instagram story. Now the problem that I'm running into is the image on the page is cropped much too tight and that's because I've already maximized the vertical space. Let's jump over to Adobe Photoshop Beta to test out the new Generative Expand feature. Using the Crop tool, this will help us expand the dimensions and add more content to the image. Here's the image at full frame in Photoshop and you can see at its current size, it just won't work for a 1080, 1920 Instagram story. So we're gonna use the generative expand tool using the crop tool in Photoshop beta to add and expand to this image. The first thing I'm gonna do is press command and the minus key to zoom out just a bit, maybe one more, because we're gonna need some space to crop this vertically. Next, I'm gonna jump over to my crop tool and in the aspect ratio, in the width, type in 1080, and in the height, type in 1920. And you can see I already have my crop dimensions set up here. So what I'm gonna do is grab the top handle and start pulling up. While you're starting to pull up, hold Shift and Option to only adjust the vertical crop in this case. So I'm gonna keep going up, up, up until the sides snap to the sides of the image. Once you have that, go ahead and release. Now at the moment, you're only seeing a white canvas behind. From the top control panel, make sure that the dropdown is set to Generative Expand, and then go ahead and click the check mark to commit to the crop. And you can see that the AI will do its work and fill and expand those white areas in the image. And that should take just a few moments to generate. Here are three variations to look at. So there's the first, here's the second, and there's the third. I'm gonna go back to the first variation because I do like that one the best. However, if you're unhappy, you can simply just click generate again and it'll just regenerate the same selection and give you another three variations to look at. Now I'm gonna jump over to the layers panel here. And if I open that up, you can see that the generative expand layer is at the very top. I could turn it off and you can see it just shows the original image. So I'll turn that back on. Now just ensure that you have that selected because I'm gonna add a sky replacement adjustment layer above the generative expand layer. And this will just soften the sky a little bit more in our image. I'm gonna go up to edit and choose sky replacement. And this will launch the sky replacement window. And this is the one I want this kind of gradient soft sky. And you can play around with the adjustment so you can shift the edge a bit, Let me make it darker. You can fade the edge if you'd like, maybe make this just a bit lighter at the bottom. You can adjust the temperature and you can adjust the scale of it as well. So I'm happy with something like that is fine and I'm gonna click okay. And now I'm ready to export the image and place it into my InDesign project. So I'll just go up to file, export, and then I'll choose export as. I'm just going to scale down the size of this, maybe make it 50% so it's not so large. And then I'm just going to export it. And I'll call this Lake Louise-2 and click save. I'm back in InDesign now and I'm going to replace the image by going up to file, place, choosing Lake Louise-2.jpg. Let's click open. Here it is in my loaded cursor. I'm gonna hold down Option. You can hold down Alt if you're on Windows. Hover over the image and drop the new one in. Next, right click, go to Fitting, and then Fill Frame Proportionally. And you can see how using Generative Expand in Photoshop Beta can really benefit you when you're working on InDesign projects such as this one. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to use the new Generative Expand feature in Adobe Photoshop Beta and apply it to an InDesign project. Let me know in the comments below if you'll be implementing this Photoshop feature into your own InDesign workflow. Until next time, take care and keep creating.